Our interview guest is George Galara from Puerto Rico. Mr. Galara was on board the USS New Jersey from 1989 to 1991. Welcome home, Mr. Galara. Thank you, sir. What is your current age? Uh, my current age is 58 years old. When did you enlist? I enlisted in September 1980. How old were you when you enlisted? I was 19. Okay. Uh, what was your inspiration for joining the Navy? Well, I want to grow up. I want to see the world. Uh, my instinct for continued study wasn't there, but I want to continue growing up and watching and see the world. And the best thing was the Navy. Back then, the Navy was its not just on a job, it's on a bench. How did you get in the Navy? I went to the recruiting office and asked for some info, and from there on, we went in. Where did you go for boot camp? I went to boot camp in Orlando. Are there any stories from boot camp you'd like to share? Well, the only... Uh, Stories that I have there were I was there for four months versus two months, which is everybody else. We had trouble pretty much with the English because of all the Latinos, but then I got the best English program, mm -hmm. got in, and got going. And how did that go? Great. It got me where I am now. <laughs> did you go to A school? Yes, sir. I went to A school in Great Lakes, Illinois. I was there as a machinist mate. Mm -hmm. I went to machinist mate A school. Uh, did the training there, did the advancement training there. And from there, from there I went to my first uh, command. Do you have any stories about A school you'd like to share? About any of your fellow students? or uh, The only story I had there from grade school was the times I had to get up at 4 in the morning to shop snow. Other than that, that was, it was a great place. And how often was that? <laughs> like two or three nights. <laughs> it's, if you're there, I, I got into school there during the winter season. So winter, so you're thinking, and this is Great Lakes, so every day you snow over there. So. Were you assigned to any vessel or station before the New Jersey? Uh, yes, I was stationed. My first ship was at the USS Proteus. That was stationed in Guam. Okay, and when did you serve aboard it? Uh, that was the, from 81 to 87, I believe. I did two tours on that ship. And where was the ship while you were aboard it? I was, the ship was in stationed in Guam. Okay. And they asked me where I was. I, I didn't even know that existed on the map, so that was news to me. Now, do you have any stories from that vessel? Uh, About your fellow crew members, officers, really anything? Well, it was a great ship. It, that was a mothership for me because that's what I did all my advancement. That's what I learned pretty much everything on the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, I did some nuclear programming there as well as regular programs. So mm -hmm. I learned a lot on there. So it, that was my main, that was the mothership for me. From there, I came back stateside. Mm -hmm. to other ships. And did you do anything stateside? Uh, well, came in from over there, went to ACNR school, uh, then I got stationed in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. I went there to the USS Anchorage, which was an amphibious boat. From amphibious boat, I went to SEMA, right all there in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Went to SEMA, and then from SEMA, I, I used to watch the battleship, because that's, back then, with the Missouri and the Jersey was on the yeah. same pair. So I used to watch them back and forth, and I got my orders when I finished my last ship in there, which it was decommissioned to, mm -hmm. cross over to the battleship. And when you first found out you were being assigned to the New Jersey, what was your reaction? Well, I'm going to, what I'd say, make history, because it, it was a history ship, mm -hmm. and I was going to be part of that, so mm -hmm. more history to the package. Yep. Uh, when you first saw the USS New Jersey, what was your initial reaction? Well, saw it was okay because I saw it because I was stationed on the base. Yeah. When I got inside, that's a different story. I mean, seeing all the weapons systems inside, all the things inside, is different compared to the regular ship that I was stationed on because all the other ships were a lot newer. So it was impressive, a lot of firepower. Are there any stories you'd like to share about your life on board the ship? Anything uh, at all? Well, I got assigned to engineering in here, and then things that I didn't know, like what we were spoken earlier about the, mm -hmm. the corpse going down through our berth and going down to the freezer. Yeah. And I never understood that until maybe a couple of years later when it's like, wow, that's what it was, because we, we used to do the funerals at sea, mm -hmm. or burials at sea. 
uh, shellback initiation. It was did happen on this boat. Uh, also, we had a uh, great uh, liver calls. We went to Thailand to Pattaya Beach, which was one of my best ones for me. I went Italian. Uh, we went to Hong Kong, Singapore, Philippines. I mean Japan. We did great. I mean, where in Japan? Uh, Kuske. Okay. Went to Kuske, Japan. Um, so you mentioned your shell back. Yes. Do you, can you explain how what happened when that uh, occurred? <laughs> a shell back. Uh, <laughs> a shell back, back was the old initiation when when they get you up at four in the morning and that day you're supposed to wear your clothes backwards. <laughs> like if you got your skivvies inside, no, the skivvies will be the last thing you put. Mm -hmm. you put your pants on first and you put your skivvies on. And then that day you'll be what they call a polywalk. You'll be walking all the path on your knees. You'll be a dog. And, and you'll be handling with a, with a collar. You'll be walking around. Then there'll be the shell bag. He's swagging your butt out with a big fire hose. And all day until you go through the whole session. Usually you walk pretty much the whole ship around. Mm -hmm. Station by station. And every station is different. Until you find out the last station, which is a swimming pool full of, you know what I know. <laughs> you dive in, and when you come out, you graduate. You're a shell bike. So, yeah, it was interesting. It always is a <laughs> fun time for the sailors. Yes, it was. Um, did any of the ports of call stand out to you? Uh, to me, the ones that always stand out was Hong Kong and Thailand, mm -hmm. Pattaya Beach. And that was due to the purchases, you know, you used to get great purchase things that you don't get on the state side. Yeah. And fine china or fine jewelry, things like that, that you don't see that in here, that's what used to be a place. Mm -hmm. um, what did you do while you were in port, if it's something you can say? Um, I don't know, I used to go shopping, that was the main thing. Okay. I, I, was, I was married, so I always, I always try to search for jewelry for my wife. Uh, in Thailand, it used to be jewelry and clothing. In Hong Kong, it was fine china and jewelry also. So yeah, it was pretty much shopping and go out. You know, you always go bar hopping with the guys. Yeah, because that's the standard thing. You're not gonna stay there. You're gonna mm -hmm. come. But we also we have it this again, so we go shopping. So did she appreciate the jewelry? Well, yes, she did. It was, it was really nice. So. Good. Did you travel through the Panama Canal? No, I never got the chance okay. to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your duty stations uh, and general quarters slash wash? Here on the station. on the ship? Or? Yes. Okay. Here, here I was stationed here on number one MMR. I was the leading party officer for number one MMR. Mm -hmm. My GQ station was right down the hall. Anytime the GQ stand, I had to run from the berthing straight up through Broadway down to number one MMR. That was my GQ station because I was the LPO. And like I said, I was the supervisor for the whole. I'd stand watch, top watch, bottom watch, either one. So you were generally in the Pacific while you were aboard the ship? Yes. Okay. Now, when did you get out of the Navy? I got out of the Navy on September 2000. I was stationed back then on Roosevelt Roads in Puerto Rico. What was your reaction when? The ship was when I got out, and when, oh, got when, out. when the ship got decommissioned, said, "Well, I mean, it's hard to see history go by. I mean, it was great. I wish we could come back. You know, I wish myself we can come back. I mean, I never forget the name. So I was a Navy guy, so it's bad to see her go by. You know. Now, is this your? Is this the first time back to New Jersey since disembarking as a sailor? Yes, sir. This is my first time, and believe me, it, I'm excited. I mean, the ship smells like it, it feels like it. I mean, it's, it's like I was still stationed there. So, so, so you just had a general feeling of excitement when you saw the ship again. Definitely. Is it as big as you remember? Yes. <laughs> and now, is this your family's first time coming yes. back to New Jersey? What life, what impact on your life did naval service have for you? Personal growth, uh, independent, I mean, and family. 
Cause my family's always been with me everywhere when I go on with the Navy, so. Now, can you talk a little bit about your post-naval life? Um, where did you end up settling down? Um, did you have a family? That sort of thing. Well, I started in the Navy. I was single. I went through my boot camp, A school. I first went into the U.S. Party in Guam. From there, I stood there for almost seven years, six years. Mm -hmm. Then I came back stateside. I became an ACNR tech. Uh, I was a machinist man. So I went to my first ship, with the second ship, which was the USS Anchorage. The Anchorage, I jump station on Long Beach. Then in Long Beach, kind of like I stationed on that base for mm -hmm. quite a while. I got married in that base. Uh, my first born was born in that area. Uh, from that ship, the USS Anchorage, I jumped to the USS Prairie, which was the oldest ship back then. Mm -hmm. You know, it had a special flag in the front. Uh, from there, we decommissioned the prairie. Then I went to Sima, which mm -hmm. was right there. I did two years in there. From Sima, that's when I joined the battleship right mm -hmm. after that. So pretty much I got stationed on the Long Beach area. Then after the battleship was gone, they decommissioned the base. Then I moved on from there to uh, San Diego. Before I decommissioned the base, I remember I got stationed there also as a correction specialist for the brig, which was another one tour right. in Long Beach also. So I did pretty much like five tours, six tours in the Long Beach okay. area. So. Mm -hmm. And after the Navy, is that when you had your uh, kids or? No, we, I had the, my kids uh, while I was still in the Navy. Okay. Uh, both are, one was born in San Diego and one was born in Long Beach. Okay. So, and what do you currently do for uh, work or retirement? Right now, uh, I'm a supervisor for a power plant. I generate power using uh, coal as the mm -hmm. fuel for it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is just kind of an open-ended section. Is there anything else you'd like to share about your time in the Navy, after the Navy, about life in general? Well, uh, Navy was good to us. I wish we, we could have come back. I mean. I appreciate it, my wife appreciate it, my kids do. Uh, it was a learning experience that nobody else has it unless you are into it. And I always, I mean, I did that that time, I did the time when we were on the Gulf mm -hmm. during the war. It's a full learning experience. I mean, I would recommend people, yeah, if you want it, go for it. There's a lot of programs in there available you can actually choose. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a learning experience. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to share? Uh, no. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this interview. I mean, you're welcome. I thought about it. And being here again is like being home again. So. Yeah. Yes. So this concludes our interview. This is Kevin Wakefield, uh, oral history assistant. Today is Saturday, June twenty third, twenty eighteen. Our interview guest was George Galara.